today we're going to look at Anitra Circassian's monster thesis. Yes, a monster thesis, meaning that a bunch of idiots in academia have proofread it for hours without finding any. My results say appendix, appendix, yes, appendix, not appendix A, appendix B, or anything like that. Yes, appendix, that's a bit odd, but okay. Corroborated by Castro observations that where women of color and queer women are represented in television, they die more often than white women. Thank you, Anita, for getting me off like a little school on just discovered porn. Now that I have been more thoroughly satisfied until there's still the machine never could. <coughs> Let's look at just how epic this failure is. First off, why is there no data for men? Or even transsexual? Why as women? And I know queer doesn't include transsexuals because she uses straight as a complement of queer and it would be transphobic not to include any transsexuals on the straight. And since she compares queer with straight, in addition to with white, it's odd that straight is not even included in the table. However, it can be the right. However, the assumption must be made in this case that people not identified as queer are not queer, when in reality there should be people whose sexuality is not known, but it should cast doubt on what she is comparing it with. Furthermore, she writes that she compares them with straight whites, which is neither included in the table nor drivable. However, I am willing to write that off as a poor phrasing. However, she also talks about disabled people, which is also not included in the table. Oh, and Anina, you only have one appendix and you didn't call it appendix A, which should be spelled with only uppercase A's. Second, we can see that these numbers contradict each other. We would expect the values under total to be the sum of the values under white and its complement POC, racist term by the way, in the columns women and dead. However, this is not the case for either column. Under women, we have 153 plus 53, which is 206, but under total we read 207. Okay, easy mistake. The least significant digit may have been typed to the neighboring digit. Under dead we have 53 plus 19 which is 72, but under total we read 88, which is just way off and both digits are incorrect. Neither of these errors can be rectified by adding the values on the queer, which would of course be an error. And looking at the percentage column, we see that total is greater than both white and POC, which is an impossibility. The value under total must be a value within the range all partitions create. That is, we have the population divided into two partitions, white and POC, with the percentages 35% and 36%. And therefore the percentage of total must be between 35 and 36 percent and therefore cannot be 43 percent which is what we can read here so we have no clue what the actual numbers are and there are too many contradictions to make a good guess we will however assume that total is the only incorrect row because otherwise we have nothing to work with and it is the row that is least likely to have been thoroughly proofread the percentage for whites is 35% and the percentage for people of color is 36%. That's a difference of one percentage point, yet the sample size for colors is only 53. Whilst technically 36% is more than 35%, let's look at the margin of error. In statistics we almost always work with the 95% confidence level and consider anything inside the conference interval at this conference level to be useless. But I'm going to be extraordinarily generous like you can only dream of and let Anita work with a confidence level of 70%. Yes, that's right, less than 3 fourths. With this incredibly generous conference level, the margin of error is 6.9% for colored people and the margin of error for queers is 21%. Yes, an enormous 21%, meaning nothing here is statistically significant even at an extremely low conference because the conference intervals includes the percentages for the duals. 
Now, if this is a bit too mathematical for you, perhaps even too oppressive for your feminist mind, let's dumb it down to a level a seven-year-old would understand. Your conclusion should not be contingent on not the wrong dating point being flipped or removed. If it is, your data is worthless. If this feels a bit too logical or even too sexist for you, basically it's like you are flipping a coin and expecting a perfect alternating pattern of heads and tails, never encountering two consecutive heads or two consecutive tails. You are not treating random sampling as stochastic. But look at that representation. It looks very proportional. Oh, you don't think so? Let's investigate. The white population in the US is 73.6%. And before you cry, but Anita is Canadian and wrote this thesis when she was a student in Canada. All TV shows listed in her paper are American with the exception of Farscape, which is Australian American. The non-white population in the US is 26.4%. The straight population is 96.6%. And the non-straight population is 3.4%. According to Anita's paper, the white population in American television Television is 74.3% and 25.7% non-white and the identifiable queer population is 2.9% and the, due to lack of detailed information in Anita's paper presumed straight population is 97.1% in fact that is a significant level of 82.5% for gender and 67.7% for sexuality that the representation in television is representative of the US demographics. Rather good for such bad sample sizes, but what does Anita have to say about this? <laughs> Now, you may ask, how confident can Anita be in her claims that coloreds and queers are disproportionately killed off? Well, for queers, she can be 55% confident, basically a toin cost. For the blues and yellows, it's even worse, an astounding 15% confidence. So there's an overwhelming risk that she is incorrect. The fact that Anita's claims are so statistically insignificant that she would not have been able to make them had the wrong datum point been flipped or removed leads me to the question. Anita, did you share pick your sample so that you would be able to make such claims? And are you completely clueless to the importance of its statistical significance? In conclusion, apparently you can get a master's thesis, albeit in a completely useless social science field, without even passing first year high school math. And I'm not kidding, Swedish high school students learn this stuff the first year. If you are doubting my claim that you learned this the first year in high school, there's an excerpt from a textbook from first year high school math for the programs preparing you for a college or university degree in social science. Fuck, do we have to clean all this up? It's German to warn a killed. Maybe I can get to live with a new Nazi punching anti to do.